paragraph B. <clears throat> right? No. D. D, 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 yeah. B and D, yeah, it's different. <laughs> All right. Seller has been advised a broker policy regarding co uh, cooperating with and the amount of a compensation of the offering and the broker, broker is authorized to come cooperating and the compensate broker participating through the multiple listing service by offering the MLS broker out of a broker compensation spec, uh, specified 3A. Either, how many percent you want to share with the co-op broker? That's basically you are uh, disclosed to the seller, okay? Um, usually we get 50-50. Sometimes a, uh, uh, some situation, uh, usually the uh, co-op broker are probably taking more than the listing broker. If the 5%, sometimes the seller will maybe telling the uh, listing broker, say, why don't you give the uh, co-op broker uh, on 3%, you keep 2% if they're really, really stingy. But if that's the case, they say, why don't we settle for 6%? Why should I have to pay less than co-op broker if I'm the listing agent? No reason I should get paid less. But... Um, but if, for example, um, if a situation happened, uh, like if the listing broker, they only sign for the 4%, if we get the CBC form, we wanna ask for, then we split 2% and 2%. And if the buyer's agent want 2.5%, well, if the seller doesn't wanna pay for it, you know who's gonna be cut? <laughs> listing agent. If the listing is sitting for quite a while, then I don't mind. If I only got that situation, 0.5%, I'm taking 2%. Give the 3% uh, uh, to the uh, co-op broker. At least I get a job done. Otherwise, you know, if my listing expires, it's going to help. Right? Sometimes you got to be flexible, something better than nothing. I know I'm really concerned, you know, how much we make. But on the other hand, we have to close the deal before we get paid. We're not like doctor or attorney. So it's different. So if you have an offer coming in, somebody... You know, the, uh, they request on a higher commission, if you can be accepted, then move on. That's just continue. Just I would say, move on to the next case, finish up this one. Otherwise, if you stuck this, it may be end up expire. It's not gonna help. Is that the, you, the, you, uh, usually the seller will be offered to the listing agent about 6% usually right now, or five only? It's up to you. I mean, no, no, that's normally. <laughs> normally, to me, the normally is six percent. But yeah, but I mean, maybe not to sell the sell it. Normally, it's four percent. What, what, what? We all have a different standard, right, between seller and the listing agent. So we can, you know, the uh, it depends what you think. Some of a seller, they are pretty generous. Say, oh, so the yes, uh, uh, so you need to get paid at six percent. Yes. Uh, it could be, it could be. For example, um, I've been working on that some of uh, you know, the uh, the seller before. If we drop the price, maybe we need to drop the percentage commission too. But if you start 6%, you have room to drop. If you only got 4%, you have no room to drop. Then everybody's stuck. So that's why, um, why I usually and i prefer and i cannot say i insist but i definitely prefer to start six percent because when i started six percent i have more way to control it on my commission i may need to you know given a credit some of a repair i may need to do something to close a deal or but if i only get signed up for four percent and I have no room to back out that's just it then you're stuck Sometimes, you know, you, that's right. They can, they probably get three and a half percent and the buyer's agent go up for two and a half percent. Yeah. But usually if that's a case, and I will probably put it even on the, the uh, other term and condition. So the, uh, uh, <clears throat> I will put the uh, including, I say the, uh, uh, the commission, including the staging, for example, staging cost. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> of the, of the, of the 
what kind of the price range you can offer if you wish it? Well, if, the, if somebody really asks a gift, the rule of thumb, I probably do it is $500 or less. $500. Some people, they want, oh, can you give me a refrigerator? Yeah, that's people. Sure, that. I'll give you $400 refrigerator. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a $4,000 refrigerator. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh, co-op? No, no, no. This is for the co-op broker. Co-op broker give it requested to the listing agent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Then I how, how to explain? How to explain? What kind of form? What kind of form? If uh, I got the five percent commission, uh huh, and the one percent like a ten a day. Oh, you put it right here. Two. two and two. That's fine. You can put it right here. Ah, you, you're listing, on the listing agreement, you put it here, the listing term or the other term and condition, you can put that. So at least you show seller. Basically, you need to show seller. You are going to pay for the staging. No, no, you don't need to show the listing agent. If the listing, if the co-op, if the, if the buyer's agent challenge you, why you get paid more? Hey, I got to pay for staging. Oh, okay. I understand. I have that situation before. I challenged the, the buyer's agent. Why you can pay more? Oh, hey, I gotta pay the painting um, and staging. Okay, I figure. So I got two and a half, and she got three and a half. Okay. <clears throat> Did you ever see the commission over six percent? Sure. Sure. I I, I have a seven percent listing commission. Oh yes. Yeah, four percent to the buyer's agent, three percent to me. <laughs> you might be sound surprised, but I got it. Yeah. Not only you know the maybe that to you guys is unrealistic. It is though. Four percent, I thought it's total. No, four percent is one side, buyer's side only. I asked for and I use a CBC form from 3% to 4%. <laughs> and I got it. <clears throat> so you asked the use case that you need to call the list agent before we talk it or? Yeah, usually I'll talk to them or maybe I'll email it to them. Uh, Sometimes when I submit the offer, I also email the the, uh, the the request, but I then the uh, request for the CBC form as well. But I need to write us, you know, also I stated on the email, you know, I would like to pay more when I, you know, when I say I offer on um, the uh, above asking price. Used to be, it's pretty easy to ask for. Well, at least to me though, that's probably five, six years years ago, when the uh, <clears throat> market is not so hot. When the market is not so hot, it's easier for us to make some money. When the market is hot, actually, it's harder. It's harder for us to make. How many 2% we have or anything below 2% because it's a seller's market if you're looking at. But when we turn around, maybe, you know, next year or the year after, if when the uh, market decline, think about this. A lot of agent, they may not survive. But on the other hand, whoever survived on this career, we make more money. Why? It's taking harder to sell the home. Then you gotta pay. You gotta pay more. That's a listing agent where we have a gut to ask more. Like what? 7%? <laughs> yeah, that's all we did is when the market declining after financial crisis. Then if you look at those, if you look at the back of history on the MLS, you'll find out a higher commission when the market declining. Last commission when the market increase or the market, you know, appreciate, you know, when it go up, when the market decline, when the price decline, you actually, we got, we make more money because take longer time and harder to sell because that's how the sellers say, well, they, they will listen. But at this moment, let's sell, sell and say, well, the, the uh, property will sell themselves. What I really need it for. <laughs> So that's why when the market, uh, <clears throat> when the market is good, you got more F fiscal for sale by owner.
<coughs> okay, and oh, just reminding you, if if you submit the offer, it's not in the matrix or the MLS. Make sure you submit the CBC form, even you are agree with the uh, uh, their local MLS commission, because we do have a reciprocal. We can uh, look at the uh, listing, and also they were showing what's the commission on it. But you don't belong to the, uh, for example, if you submit it to like Santa Barbara or somewhere in Central California or Northern California offer, we don't belong to their MLS, then make sure you submit it, the CBC form, and you mark on the CBC form on the A, confirm, even you accept it, whatever, 2%, 2.5%, or 3%, whatever the commission, you submit it. Because without submitting a CBC form, they don't have to pay you. Because you don't, you don't belong to their multiple listing service. Why? It's because this statement cannot really protect you. See, compensate broker participating through the multiple listing service. Do we participate in their board? No. We only participating here, the local matrix. So we get protected on the local market here, but we cannot, we won't get protected from other market. Even still within California, but we don't belong to their they're poor or their MLS, then we don't get paid. They can they can actually uh, tell you, say, sorry, you don't get paid. Why? Can you argue with them? No. You don't belong to their board, and how can they protect you? But if they sign a CBC form, they have to pay you. So that's why they make sure. Now that's why our company doing the escrow, we want to make sure. We can go get paid. That's why we are insist let the listing agent signing the CBC form. Got it? Okay. Yeah. It's our money. You gotta consider that. Or whatever the flat fee may be. You you put it, you know, or the dollar sign. And D2, broker is authorized to cooperate with the compensate broker operating outside of MLS as per broker's policy. See that? Broker is authorized, who, who's gonna authorize? So that's why we gotta sign the CBC form, okay? Broker, we can authorize to cooperate with the uh, compensate broker outside of MLS. So that means we are in control, not seller. Broker, authorized, do they wanna pick other uh, region, co-op broker. E, seller hereby irrevocable assigned to the broker above compensation from seller fund and proceed in escrow. Broker may submit this agreement as instruction to compensate broker pursuing to paragraph 3A. To any escrow regarding the uh, property involved seller and a buyer, prospective buyer or other transferee. So the uh, uh, those are from seller's fund. Our compensation actually from seller's fund. But if the seller's fund not enough, then you gotta have you gotta need a seller to put in more money into the escrow. Because if their fund is only good enough to pay the uh, their uh, loan and not enough to pay your commission, that means sellers still need to, you know, put the money into the escrow. F. <clears throat> the seller represent that seller has not previously entered into the listing agreement with another broker regarding the property unless specified as follow. So when you are when you guys are if the marketing for the expired listing, I will put on it. I know most of the listing agents, they probably just ignore it, but I will put on in the, uh, the seller actually previously entered, just especially right after. If you talk about years back, then I probably, doesn't matter, you know, it's been the years, 
But if you just, you know, they just expired for a couple months, I will put it on just in case, you know, if anything happened, uh, so I don't get challenged. That's, you know, the, I, I would say it's more like a code of ethic. You know, that's what I figured you know, on this career. I'd rather do it properly, okay? Uh, treat everybody, all the uh, uh, alliance. You gotta consider, you know, um, the uh, other agent or broker, they are like your alliance instead of a competitor. If you treat them, you know, the, uh, as an alliance, you don't, you know, you, you treat them fairly. So that's why I will put it on. You know, if they just enter into it, then I will ask the, uh, uh, the sellers if they do turn in the list. Remember the, the one, you know, after, right before they expire, see if they turn in the list. Okay. <clears throat> and two, seller warrant that seller has no obligation to pay compensation to any other broker regarding the property unless the property is transferred to any of the following individual or entity. So if the seller will tell you, I, if I sell my property to my brother, you don't get paid. Or if I sell my property to certain people, to my friend, then you got to name it right here. So you understand, you won't get paid. Yeah. So this, you know, for the F2, not really, you know, favorite in us, but if that's, you know, the case, seller was asked, oh, I already got the, uh, uh, say, my friend, you know, actually engaged with me, but he or she doesn't have enough money. So if during the, your listing period, if they finally get their down payment and they want to buy, so I don't get paid. So would you take that listing or not? Why not? But what's the chance, you know, if I put on the market, if somebody buy it before you hit their down payment, get ready. Do I got anything to lose? What do you think about it? If you don't take this listing, you don't, you don't get anything. Well, if, if, if you take price and the seller is saying, no, get price, I will not accept them. It can be any reason. Well, then, if they, that's the reason, then if that's the case, then I'll, then I'll cancel myself. <laughs> if that's the case. But the issue is, I will take the listing first. When I take the listing first, I'm in control. When you don't have signing this agreement, you got nothing. You're nobody. Whatever you talk to seller is useless. You gotta make them sign. Unless you don't want this listing, that's a different story, okay? But if you think, yeah, I want this listing, it's just because the minor detail like this, because before you take the listing, they already engage a friend. The friend doesn't have the money yet, but not enough down payment, or well, that situation could happen. And they already uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the price. Sometimes, usually, if that situation happened, seller will still pay you something. It's not gonna be the full commission, but you still get something. Well, something, sometimes better than nothing because you prepare the paperwork. So that will then I if that's the case, I I will issue another addendum. So buyer and seller sign. Or maybe buyer pay me instead of seller, because seller give the uh, the buyer huge discount from the selling price. Right? Then buyer can pay me to prepare. But on the following, number three. If the property is sold to anyone listed above during time seller is obligate the uh, compensate another broker. Broker is not entitled to compensation under this agreement, and two, broker is not obligated to present seller in such transaction. Whose broker is that? Co-op broker. So, so if you list a person over there, the listing broker did not get paid, but if the, uh, their friend or their family member or whoever they want to sell it to, and he or she has a broker, a buyer's broker, and the seller, the uh, a co-op with the uh, broker, <laughs> we need a fake, you know, when we are, you know, dress up. Oh, yeah, we're busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes we need to fake. <laughs> So that's why, you know, on the F3, you got to understand is the, uh, if they do have a co-op broker, you know, the buyer's agent, a buyer, they do have a broker and seller willing to pay the uh, buyer's broker, but not you, listing broker. Confused? So that will be, will be three parts, right? One, one, one in the listing. One is from another buyer. No, 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 no. And right now is one for the, the relative of the buyer. No, 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 no. There's the two and three, they actually go together. Two okay. and three go together. When you list any name on them, the two, okay, on the F2, then that means only listing broker didn't get paid. So whatever the percentage you are on the top, okay, it doesn't matter. You don't get paid. But, but if the buyer's broker, uh, they send out, for example, single party compensation. You'll get paid, and if the, the seller uh, seller agree, so you you think it's not fair? Well, which is not fair? It is, but that's you know part of agreement. If you list anybody on the F two, then three, then it's up to the seller. They want to call up with the buyer's broker or not okay they could that's just telling you whatever you put a three percent here even i sign up for six percent maybe the buyer's broker they can still you know retain retain on the three percent commission but not you you don't get paid because i'm f2 they already listed i'm gonna sell it to my friend or family member so you don't get paid <clears throat> well i know but i mean but if, if you ask me, would I take the case? Yeah, I will still take it. It's because what's the chance? Why, if if their friends or family so ready, why they need you? Yeah. Want to be the listing? It's because they are very, very shaky, and their chance is really slim. And but the seller, they still want to sell. Or as a Mike Ferry first question, do you have to sell? Yes. Does that show you the seller have to sell? Doesn't matter seller to someone else or who, his relative or friends. He or she need to sell the property. As long as they need to sell, the seller need to sell the property, I'll take the listing. Then we talk about the price, okay? Because sometimes you use a listing to marketing the lead. Don't think about it, you know, it's like, you know, the uh, just, oh, I just, you know, uh, listing this property and just sell this property. No, I, all I want is, I, you want to use my listing and generate the lead. So you can have, you, you do not defeat your purpose, get the listing. Sometimes you got overpriced listing. If when you do in the open house and people come, then what's those visitor? Maybe one out of 10, they don't have an agent. You try to grab them? Is that possible? Sure. And or when I stick the for sale sign, somebody call. Is that the lead or the what? I get that very often on my listing. And I try to retain those buyer. And I don't care if they have an agent or not. Why should I have to ask them? If I ask them, that means okay, then I may have I, I may just you know leave it to the agent. But if they don't tell me and they ask me all kinds of questions, then I say, can I have your phone number and email address? And then start working on a, some other property. I don't have to sell my listing. Because they, they maybe claim, oh, your house is too small, or your house is the condition is too old, fine. Or location is not good enough, fine. It's okay. Why don't I just find you, you know, other property, what you like? So you, instead of saving you some time to, you know, search around, you know, through Zillow or Trulia, you just tell me what you want and want your criteria, and you just look through my email. So we can start from there. But I never meet those buyer yet. 
because they call me through my for sale sign. So that's why sometimes, you know, when we put on the listing, we also encourage a seller, allow us to put the for sale sign. You know to who? Actually, you can tell seller. It's actually more, uh, actually you generate, you, you, you are more visible. So people will see it, you know, not just the internet. But on the other hand, I want to advertise too for myself. Yeah. Why? It's because in your neighbor, if the neighborhood you have, if you are, if you are the marketing for a particular neighborhood, you got to constantly showing you have for sale sign. Otherwise, if you send out a postcard and you don't have any for sale sign, and what the neighbor think? Wow. Hey, I guess you are not good enough. That's why it doesn't matter. You want to market, and nobody want to allow you to be a listing agent. So you got to have a for sale sign to show the neighborhood you are constantly you know, selling and selling the property over there. More persuadable when you sell out. So that's why they're all more like, you know, connected each other or related. Paragraph four, item excluded and included. Unless otherwise specified in the real estate purchase agreement, all fixture and fitting that is attached to the property are included. Fixture and fitting that attach to the property. So anything attached to the wall, to the foundation, to the soil, including landscape, gardening, that is all included. Because when you buy a property, it's not buying just a house. You buy no land too, right? The lot. So anything, you know, on the lot is belong is considered a fixture. You gotta leave there. So, for example, some people, if they wanna, you know, have a guava tree or orange tree or something, whatever the fruit tree, have the seller dig it out, put it into the pot. Don't let the buyer see it and they say, "Oh, that's not included." Okay, if if that's the case, you don't have time to dig it out. Then you gotta have to list it right here. Then they have to put in the MLS. Oh, you know, the guava tree is not included on the sales. One time I showed the a uh, Bang Kong property, and you know the landscape is like um, front yard. They got about ten or different, so many holes. Because when I said why, and the, because they got really really tall pine tree, okay, and they all sell that. Since I'm gonna forgive before close, right? <laughs> they sell those pine tree. To I don't know someone else. So the whole landscape, front yard, backyard, tons of big hole. What can I say? Right? They dig it out. <laughs> so that that could happen. Okay. So any additional item excluded? So the personal property item are excluded from the purchase price. We all know that because it's not attached. So all the furniture, personal belonging, definitely. You know, those are not the, uh, uh, consider the uh, uh, property, the fixture. Additional item excluded and additional item included. But if you are out of a space, you can attach a dendon or listed more items on the other term and condition area. Because I know I only got one line for excluded, additional included. Sometimes um, some people want to include everything in the for the whole price: furniture, bedding set, dining room, refrigerator, washer and dryer, and you got, you don't have enough space to put everything. <clears throat> Seller intend that the above item are excluded or included in offering the property for sale, but understand that the purchase agreement supersede any intention expressed above and will ultimately determine which item are excluded and included in the sale. Two, broker is not responsible for and not does not guarantee that above exclusion and or inclusion will in the purchase agreement. So that means purchase agreement will supersede. So when you are the listing agent, be careful when you receive the offer, please read at least three times. Sometimes when I look twice, it's not good enough because I don't want 
by itself to miss anything, especially a little trap. Oh, what is included? Especially you have excluded item and the buyer didn't mention anything. So that's what legally they are considered included, right? For example, chandelier. Seller saying not excluded. Okay, not included. Okay. It's going to be included purchase, but on the purchase agreement, they did not mention anything is not exclude is not included. So that on the exclusion area, on the purchase area, it's blank. And including area also blank. They didn't really mention that. But chandelier considers what fixture. And we don't want those, you know, argument happen, especially when it's getting close of escrow. So the uh, uh, buyer's agent says, okay, so, uh, oh, uh, just want to let you know, the chandelier is included. You got that? I said, no, I already mentioned that on MLS, on the listing, it's excluded. Well, who's right? That's why the statement telling you. Purchase agreement supersede any intention expressed above and will ultimately determine which item are excluded and included in the sale. So purchase agreement supersede the listing agreement. If my offer, if I, my buyer really want the chandelier and I will, I will mark it including area Chandelier included. Even I know it's a fixture, but I rather don't want to throw the listing agent under bus. That actually doesn't look good. But if the, it's some of the a buyer's agent, they are pretty sneaky. Be careful. Okay. Listing agent, you might have to bite a bullet if that's the case. Yeah. Make sure you uh, read the offer three times before you present to seller. Hey, too bad. The photos on MLS, isn't it? Yeah. That's evidence. Okay. okay? Yeah. yeah. Most likely we have all the photos, right? And that's evidence. How many photos we can upload on MLS? 75. Well, do you think which, which part you, hardly you don't, you know, you miss anything. <laughs> Everything, you know, especially chandelier could be the selling point, but sellers say not nah, excluded. What well, do you want to avoid it not to take a photo? I could, but it's hard. <laughs> the white out, <laughs> say, oh, this is not included. <laughs> but that sometimes you may using, I tell this, Sometimes, if that's the case, I would ask the seller. If you're the listing agent, you say, okay, I know the chandelier, you want to take it away. Either you want to take it, you want to remove it now before I take the photos, or I can put it on over there and say exclude it from listing. But if somebody offer you a great price, would you include it? Make them be aware of it, just in case. Right? If somebody pay you full price, come on, your chandelier, five, six thousand dollars, can you buy another one? Well, unless it's sentimental value or it's an antique, well, definitely you cannot buy another one. You know, if like you talk about 100 years old chandelier, yeah, I would probably take it. But the issue is when you take it, it may not work on the other house, especially like San Marino. <laughs> A lot of uh, uh, their, their, their lamps, you know, on the wall, the chandelier. Did you really want to remove that? I mean, that just fitted the house. You bring it to the antique chandelier and put it at a new house. It's not fit. Yeah. Not only that is unique, once you remove it, they broke. <laughs> because they are pretty uh, fragile. It's been there for 100 years. It could be very fragile, even the electrical wiring is fragile too. <clears throat> All right, uh, 4B, lease or not own item. The following item is 
are leased and not owned by the seller. If you have a solar power uh, system, mark here, or alarm system. If you're signing a contract with the alarm company, say for example, three years, that's considered lease. You gotta have to mark here. If you still have, the, the contract hasn't finished yet. Propane tank, we don't have it here. Water softener, yes, I see some people, they do lease the water softener. And any other item, if it's a lease. And two, lien items. A following item has been financed and lien has been placed on the property to secure payment. Well, what do you guys, you know, what, what, what do you think? Lease and lien, what's the difference? It sounds about the same, isn't it? No. Okay, what's the difference? Lease, that means uh, if I didn't pay, I don't want to pay, doesn't matter, but the lien, you must pay by law and they will sue you. The lease, they will still sue you. But different. Okay. Let me tell you. <clears throat> That's it. Lien, you got you it. Property, when you sell the property, you need to pay it. Okay, lease property does not belong to the owner yeah. legally, okay? And they may not put on the title, you got that. Right. But lien, what's a lien? Mortgage considers a lien, they will put on the title. They will go with the, because the lien, the ownership is the uh, uh, seller. Lease property, the ownership is belong to solar company. That's different. Just like when you lease the car, okay? When you lease the car, who's the ownership? Well, whatever the, the automaker, bank, that's it. But when you lean, it's more like what? Finance. When you finance, Okay, so that's why it's a lien. They didn't really say, that here, you know, has been finance. See that? Lease payment and finance payment is different. So the lien item is the following item, has been financed and lien has been placed on the property to secure payment. So first of all, ownership different, and one is a financing, the other one is a lease. They all payment anyway. They're just different on the ownership. Same thing, solar panel, solar power panel, can you finance through the solar company? Yes, but it's you own it. But on the other hand, if you finance through the solar company, uh, if you sell the property, most likely you, the seller need to pay off the solar panel. Why? Because the solar company financed through the original seller, not the new buyer unless the buyer want to assume the finance payment. That's a different story. Otherwise, seller may need to pay it off the solar panel. So that's why the uh, uh, most of the uh, solar panel is leased. If it's a lease attached to the uh, property, then buyer had to assume, no matter you like it or not, you need to assume the payment. Can you tell the seller to pay it off? Yeah, you can try. A little bit hard, but it's a lien. Seller, you don't need to tell seller, seller may have to pay it off. Okay, because it's a lien. Or anything on the windows and doors and heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, or any other. Sometimes when you do the remodeling, for example, Hero program, those are high efficient. Those programs, you borrow the money from government. Okay, then they will make sure you, they, you pay the payment. So they will put on um, your property tax as a lien, including the interest. So you grab those money to uh, remodel your home, uh, make, maybe replacing the windows, water heater, um, put an insulation, um, maybe tankless water heater, you know, something like that. And also air conditioning, and heating system. That's they have a limited what you spend those money for, whatever the items, because it has to be high efficient. 
Yeah. Seller will provide a buyer as part of a sales agreement, copy of a lease document or other document obligation seller to pay for any such lease or lien items. So we need to show if you have any lien items or a lease item, we need to show buyer. If the buyer doesn't like it, like buyer can cancel escrow, back out. Yeah. <coughs> Multiple listing service. Okay. Broker is participating and subscribe to, we are here is a, a MRMLS matrix. Multiple listing service. Uh, possibly other, unless otherwise instructed in writing, the property will be listed with the MLS specified the above. The MLS, or if it's specified, the primary MLS for the geographic area of the property, all terms and transaction, including area price financing, if applicable, one, will be provided to the MLS in which property is listed for publication, dissemination, and use by person, entity, or uh, items approved by the MLS. Two, may be provided to the MLS even if the property was not listed with the MLS. So we're going to have to fill in. Uh, we belong to which geographic area? I mean, we are pretty fortunate right now. The, uh, the MRMLS is getting really, really big and cover pretty much whole Southern California. When I start practice, Irvine is not including, <laughs> you know, I said, huh? when I was listing an Irvine house, I have to send the order by writing, okay? They have a form and I have to pay their board to put on their MLS. Our MLS doesn't have it because only LA County and just part of a North Orange County and Irvine considers South or uh, Orange County. It's not belong to there because they have CRMLS and now we all merge together. So actually the matrix, they merge, I think it's about 10 or 12. Originally the, the MLS system, we all merge and share data together all the way to San Diego. It used to be San Diego's way out. Uh -uh. Yeah, they don't include it, but now we can see what San Diego, right? Yeah. Calabasas, La Jolla, you know, used to be on the north of Ventura County. I cannot see it. It's belong to different board, different MLS. Now they all merge together. The greater, we call the greater LA area. That's why we pay the MLS. If they losing money, we don't have service. Okay. <laughs> so that's how we supporting them and they provide a service to us. That's it. Give me a one minute. Drink too much coffee. I need to go to the restroom.
still got another hour to go. I don't want to hold my bladder. <laughs> Okay, here's a benefit of using the MLS. Impact for the option out of the MLS. What is the MLS? The MLS is database of participating in the sale that is available and disseminated to and as, uh, accessible by all other real estate agents who are participate and subscribe to the MLS. Property information submitted to the MLS describe the price, terms, and condition under which the sales uh, seller's property is offered for sale including but not limited to listing broker offer of compensation to other broker. It is likely the uh, significant number of a real estate participant in any given area are participant and subscribe to the MLS. The MLS may also be part of a reciprocal agreement to which other multiple listing service belong. Real estate agent Belonging to other multiple listing service that have a reciprocal agreement with the MLS also have access to the information submitted to the MLS. MLS may further trans transmit listing information to internet site and the post property listing online. So that means at this time, you know, all our listing, basically they can also transfer on the uh, online services. and sold to the private sector. Exposed to the buyer through the MLS, listing property of the MLS exposed the seller's property to all real estate agent and broker and their potential buyer's client who are participating and subscribe to the MLS or the reciprocal, reciprocal MLS. Close private listing club or group. Close or private listing club or groups are not the same as MLS. The MLS referred to the above access to all eligible real estate licensees and provided for exposure and the listing property. Private and close listing club and group of a licensee may have been formed outside of MLS. Private and close listing club or groups are accessible to a more limited number or licensee and generally offer less exposure for listing property. Whether listing property through a closed private network and exclusion, excluding it from the MLS. <clears throat> okay, it is advantage and disadvantage to the seller and why should they discuss what the uh, agent taking the seller's listing. So what is more like a private club? Like, you know, within our office, we do have an intranet. Like, you know, we might using the quants email and spread out the news from, for the agent, you know, within our office and so do other office as well. That's more like a private club because you don't come in. Great, <laughs> right. so I can have three, good. Yeah, then I can go to the restroom after the, another hour, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that is actually we only a limited people would know. The only situation, the uh, uh, we don't really, really want the uh, uh, pocket listing. But if that's the case, you know, uh, what seller wants, then you need to explain to the seller, uh, look, you know, this is the... Uh, not really good for you uh, uh, exposure for your house because we only got limited the people can see it out of our you know office area 
So we still encourage them because if we put on the uh, listing, if we don't put on the MLS, that mean not only rest of the agent from our outside of our office cannot see it, and none of a buyer cannot see it online either. Like Zillow, Trulia, they won't see it because we cannot. When we don't upload it to MLS, and they don't have any information as well. You know the new the uh, the Zillow rule is you technically um, only seller can do that as a seller can you know upload their own property, but as an agent you cannot upload the Zillow directly without upload it to MLS. You'll get you'll get MLS violation for that, a warning for that because once they found out the listing on the the uh, um, <clears throat> Zillow, but it's not on the MLS, you're in trouble. I know the, uh, some of our agents, they're pretty sneaky. They're using coming soon, okay? But if you really, really want the uh, using as a coming soon to put on the Zillow, you tell the owner, you upload it yourself. I cannot use my account to upload it. You create your own account to upload it. Yeah. Yeah. Then who to call? Well then that's you know could be the argument because you don't because you, you do have a listing agent you sign a listing already but haven't put on the market yet so that's why <clears throat> what you, you know the uh Well, that's, you know, certainly you don't want to sign a short term. Some seller maybe give you one month, two months. It's tough to market everything. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Oh. We, when we sign this, uh -huh. what we need. Okay. I'll put on the MLS. Oh, yeah. You do have the time, you know, that's why I'm going to cover the SEOM. That's why, you know, you got the other page for that. The SEOM, uh, that is actually if the seller want to delay to put on the market. Sometime when the seller intend to sell, I would encourage you to sign a listing right away because if you don't sign a listing with the seller, someone else may jump in. Oh, I, I, I want to sell the house after one month later. Great, sign now. Why? Well, I can delay, not a problem, but I want to see your commitment. No, my question is that, oh, it's already signed. Okay. What dating we need to put on the MLS? The date? ASAP? If they sign at an MLS, like, oh, no, I'm sorry. If they sign a listing agreement, next day. Next day, please. Next day, need to put on. Okay. That's on the MLS rule. Cannot say that the three or four, five days. No. No. Next no. Day. On the, uh, uh, on our multiple listing service, on this listing agreement, actually, the, uh, um, I can keep on showing it active. I keep on using it, yeah. <clears throat> See this, you know, if you're looking at, uh, if you sign on uh, the, uh, for, the ML, uh, for the listing rule is 48 hours, but the MLS rule is next day, next day. So if you cannot put on the MLS right away, you better let the uh, seller signing the SELM, seller exclusion on the multiple, uh, on the multiple listing service. So those are, you gotta have to, you know, let them sign it, just protect yourself if you get challenged by the uh, MLS or by the board. And I don't wanna bring into trouble, that's why I always put on the mark, uh, listing day at the same date. So I can start with zero day. Some people, they say when they upload it, they only start 20 day, uh-oh, you know what? They'll get the warning right away. Because you delay and that's why the, uh, uh, the, the board or the MLS said, okay, you say you are, they haven't, they did not change your date. They prepared a long time ago. But when they upload it, they forgot to change your date. But once you upload it, you cannot change your date starting date. Then after the case, next day rule. But you got, you know, once you upload it, you already got 20 days. Then at the time, as the MLS, they say, okay, look, let show me, show me your SEOM. If you don't have it, you're in trouble. So, when I sign a listing, 
I usually was, you know, sign an SEOM at the same time. If you cannot upload it and the seller is not ready to put on the market the next day, especially you cannot take the photo. Some people, you know, take the, doesn't take the photo, you know, some maybe you need to hire a photographer or you need to do staging. It will delay listing. Sign the SEOM. Okay, the other form, the one page. I already give it to you guys. So not listing property in the local uh, MLS. If the property is listed in MLS, which does not cover the geographic area which the property is located in the real estate agent and broker working that territory. Buyer that representing looking the property in this neighborhood may not be aware the property is for sale. Yeah, because you know, since we are the outside of area, but now we have a uh, private sector like Zillow, Trulia. So the buyer actually, they can search by themselves, even it's outside of our territory. And we cannot really email to them on the listing unless we go through a reciprocal MLS. But usually we don't service those accounts either, too far. <laughs> Option out of MLS. If the seller elect to exclude a property for the MLS, seller understand that acknowledge that a real estate agent, broker from the real estate, uh, estate office and their buyer client who have access to MLS may not be aware uh, that the seller's property is offered the, uh, the sale. Information about a seller's property will not transmit it from the MLS to various real estate internet sites that are used by the public to search for property listing. C, real estate agent, broker and member of the uh, public may be um, aware of terms and condition under which seller is marketing the property. So if you option out the MLS, same thing, you need to sign it. SEOM on the paragraph seven, the last check mark. If you guys want to see it, you know, on that, if you, because the check mark, they tell you, you don't want to put on the MLS. So you check there and sign it. The first one is the, uh, the paragraph seven, the first check mark is a how many days of delay. Second check mark is exactly the date you will put on the market. And the third check mark is you totally doesn't want to be on the MLS at all. So that means you, you can only stick the for sale sign at the front yard to sell. Hopefully, seller will let you do it. If they don't, no, I don't want for sale sign. Uh, so neighbor will know, I'm selling the house. I said, well, are you really want to sell the house or not? Right? Let's go back to this first question. Do you have to sell your home? You don't, you don't let me put on the MLS. You don't let me to put on the for sale sign. What do you want me to do? I'm a just human. I'm not God. Uh huh. If neighborhood can be complained about it, say, hey, that uh, will be look ugly. By law or not? Good question. Each community, especially a with the HOA, some of them you make sure what's the HOA rule and city rule. Put it this way, Irvine they have their own rule. R for sale sign. It's all too big for them. Well, no, 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 not too big, too tall. Usually we got about eight foot high. But I mean, um, Irvine City, they can only allow four feet. The eight footer post is too high for them. You, you can install the four feet, but that's an Irvine City rule. Some of a community, they want you smaller for sale sign. Oh. And I have to redo it my for sale sign. Like what? Your open house sign. Right, correct. Right. That has become a for sale sign. That size. So if if you want to cheap, I'll tape it. I'm using my open house sign. Instead of open house, I put for sale. <laughs> then I hang it, you know, on my open house sign, you know, but tape it on the for sale words to well, I mean, open house words to for sale. But I don't have to redo it for another for sale sign anymore. But that's a city rule. That's a community rule. Yeah. So we have that issue uh, before. If you did not follow the uh, HOA, definitely, you know, neighbor will complain. The HOA would, you know, maybe fine the seller. And seller will 
tell the listing agent, you pay, <laughs> or whatever the warning, you know, maybe. Okay, so before you list anything on the Orange County, especially with the community, ask them, do they have any specific rule for the uh, uh, for sale sign? Just like, you know, when we sell to the townhouse, you don't stick the for sale sign outside the property. They won't let you do that. But if they put the for sale sign inside the house over the window, not all of them. Sometimes they say, wait a minute. They may say you cannot put that either. But most of the community, they will allow, ah, oh, it's inside the house. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's you know, our you know, during the training on Kwong's training, they rather you know put, let us put all the post, open house sign anytime. Sometimes you know, I say that that's why the our coworker Jenny Wu you know shared with us you know for the open house. Yeah, I I put it the same day. I going out at midnight, right after twelve o'clock, the same day. Well, yeah, legally, yes. If I want to do it open on Sunday, I do it on Sunday, in the right after the midnight. But did you want to really want to go out to put the open house on the midnight? Not me though. <laughs> she will. That's how she did. But I don't know how many people will drive by. You know, look at your open house sign after midnight. <laughs> Maybe early morning. I'm still the good old fashioned way. I stick on my open house sign right before I do it on my own open house. And right after I finish, I took my sign. Oh, so when you finish, you took out all the signs? Yes. Yeah, right now. A um, lot of, some agent, they're using the open house sign to advertising. Even they don't have any listing. Sometimes I just like, how come they point this way and point that way? How many open house he has? <laughs> I'm the same, I'm an intersection. Uh, but if you really follow the sign, they end up nowhere. They just stick there for advertisement. Um, that's not my style, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I the open house sign I strictly only use for open house. I don't use it for advertising. Yes, I. I mean, certainly it's a direction. You know, you you point, you let the people you know point it to your house and. But most likely the open house, you know, some of a, a area like Irvine. They hardly stick any open house sign. Why? They figure on the internet, they all, you can see it. And you put in the address on your GPS, you'll get there. Why you need an open house sign for? They only stick the open house sign in front of a house, not in the intersection or direction, everything. No, not anymore. Because that's a newer agent, younger agent. They figure you should know. Okay, they don't. That's why hardly you see the uh, open house sign in Irvine. But actually, they do have a lot of open house. But they they just don't put the open house sign on the road, on the street anymore. Sometimes it's because too much hassle, or some of the area they cannot even stick the open house sign to break the rule. Some community they are not allowed. So they f they figure if that's so much, so many situation happen, and uh, or the rule. Then why don't I just put the force aside? Forget it. I'm not going to put anything. Yeah. It's tired. <laughs> huh? It's tired. Oh, I know. I know. It's tired. But usually on my for sale side, I don't really want to put the, the major, uh, well, unless it's close enough, the major traffic intersection area. Yes, you will. You could. Yeah. Um, but I guess sometimes I may be, maybe just a little bit lazy. I only, you know, uh, put the force, uh, open house sign just on the intersection of a community to point into the street. I won't, I probably would put the major, major, major street. I know that's a kind of, a, a really against it, um, Kwong's training, but uh, that's my style. That's it. Just like I don't wear a Titan suit <laughs> when, I, when I show the property. So <laughs> that's my style. Okay, I'm just dressing like this. Be myself, that's it. 
Uh, reduction in exposure. Any reduction is exposure. Uh, the property may lower the number of offer and negativity impact the sales price. So less exposure, it will affecting the prices because you got last buyer to show, you got last uh, uh, buyer to submit the offer, then definitely you cannot really generate enough traffic. Presenting all offers. Seller understand that broker must present all offers received for seller's property unless seller give broker written instruction to the contrary. How long do we have to present the offer even when we open escrow? Technically, we need to present the offer until right before close of escrow. If the seller doesn't ask anything, tell us to stop, then, then we stop. Otherwise, we need to present the offer, continue to show the property right even right before close of escrow because anything could happen. Like what? Suddenly buyer pass away. <laughs> they cannot buy. Well, they, the, the ask will have to cancel. Yeah. Or suddenly the uh, uh, buyer cannot get funded. The buyer has to cancel. So you better have a backup offer, you know, so you do not wasting any time. So those situations may happen. The chance is really, really, really slim. But I cannot tell you, when you open escrow, can anybody say, guarantee 100% will close? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. All right. So initial. That's part. Broker and agent initial. All right. So this is the area as an agent or the broker, either one of you. Either one of us, you know, we can initial. B. MLS rule generator providing the residential real property and vacant lot listing be submitted to the MLS within two days and sub some other period of time after all necessary signature has been obtained on the listing agreement. Broker will not have to submit this listing to the MLS if within the, that time, broker submit the MLS an appropriate form signed by the seller. That's a S E L M. So you mark it right here. If the seller need to uh, sign on the S E L M, you do the check mark right here. Once you check that, the uh, uh, S E L M form will automatically generate into your library right away in the file. So seller elect to exclude it, the property from the MLS as provided by the CAR form, SELM, or local equivalent form. Okay. So here, our uh, CAR form is the, uh, um, say, two days. But this two days, actually, for whole California, whole California rule, but which rule supersede RCAR, MLS? <laughs> Are we gonna put on the MLS, you know, uh, local, our MLS? Yes, we gotta rely on that. And what's their rule? Next day. So once we sign it, next next day, we have to put on the MLS. But here's a form, it's in two days. I know it kinds of conflict, but same thing, the local rule supersede the, you can say state rule, because CAR, form is considered, the zip form is the uh, the whole California state. Maybe a different board, different MLS, they have two days, you know, they can put it on. Used to be our MLS, two days. And later on, uh, just about a year ago, they changed to one day. So next day, we gotta put it on. If that's the case, I'd rather follow the MLS or most likely I'd let the seller sign an SELM form. C, the MLS rule allow the MLS data to be made available to MLS to additional internet site unless broker give the MLS instruction to the contrary. Seller acknowledge that for the belowing option out instruction to be effective. Seller must make them on the separated instruction to the buyer signed by the seller. Specific, specific information that can be excluded 
from the internet as permitted by or in accordance with the MLS is as follow. C1, property availability on the MLS, address on the MLS. Seller can instruct the broker to have the MLS not display the property or property address on the internet. Uh-huh, you could. When, but what is, so, what is good, you know, when you just put on a photo without the address? <laughs> I say, what the house, you know, where the houses are. They want to purposely want to call um, the listing agent? Maybe, if that's what you want to generate more leads. I don't recommend that. <laughs> it, it's too much trouble. But if the, if the, what's the seller, you know, they don't want to expose the, uh, the address to the uh, um, private sector. But on the other hand, you know, we can surely keep just the MLS. You, you know what? We can explain to the uh, owner. We can keep everything on the MLS, all the photo, all the address, everything, but not private sector. Can you do that? Uh -huh. we, can, we can let the, uh, the, the owner signing the other form. Okay, a call, I'm gonna cover that, S-E-L-I, right here. Like what? Excluded from internet, the I mean internet. So the MLS doesn't consider internet, MLS is a multiple listing service. So Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, that's considered internet. Then they can exclude it, all the information from internet. So people doesn't know and cannot see the photos, on the uh, through Zillow because sometimes if some of a property they have um, antique valuable items and they don't want to expose but they are okay with the agent to bring the uh, uh, clients over there or they don't want the neighbor to know they are selling it or it's especially vacant property they don't want to invite the theft come over or homeless people come over to live in. <laughs> got it why? That's why they where they're coming from. Some people they are really conscious and you know uh, careful on what their property is. So I even have the uh, uh, seller say, James, can you not taking the photo of my condenser for the air conditioning? Uh, I don't know. It's it, it's a brand new. That's why I, I thought it's a selling point. Yeah, but it may be the theft. They can steal it because it's outside of house. They can steal the condenser. Did you ever have the people that steal the condenser? Uh-huh. I had the homeowner. And after they purchased a the property, uh, unfortunately, you know, some of the area not so safe. Even the townhouse within the gate and their condenser, it got stolen. Yeah. Big condenser. <laughs> Come. And what do you think? That's, sometimes they use one. And especially brand new one, they steal it and they can resell it for maybe half price. <clears throat> oh, two, feature option out. Seller can, oh, did I finish that? Okay, seller understand that either that this option out would mean consuming searching for the listing and the internet may not see the property or property address in response uh, to their search. So if they want to, if you want, if you did not put the address, how do I know this house is in which city? How do I know? Right? Uh, so, but if it's just a photo, it doesn't do anything good. So, so what do we do? I would rather persuade the seller, say, let's disclose all the information just within the MLS. I know what you're concerned. I understand your concern. Your concern actually is a private sector. I can tell you 99% of the uh, seller, they are concerned it's a private sector issue, not our MLS issue, because our MLS, only the agent can access. Well, technically, yeah. Uh, if you don't give away the uh, username and password. <laughs> oh, the other thing I just say, why I just say don't give out the, your username and password on the MLS is because they can always track you where you are. Okay, now the internet, they can track you where you are. And not only that, the way you type the password, how fast and what location. Okay. I don't know, did you notice that when you sign in, uh, I know it's the, uh, when you sign in the MOS, they will tell you, you want to expose your location. 
You either allow or not allow. Okay. Now our MLS is not really, really tight. Just like, you know, I have the uh, commercial um, MLS too, you know, on the CoStar. They are really, really strict. Every time I can only sign on one, same thing, our MLS. If you sign on your MacBook, you probably cannot sign on your iPad. So same thing. But if they found out I sign in a different location, I sign in right here and the other one is signing on miles away. They lock me out. And they will not give it. If that's the case, I better have a good explanation. Otherwise, no more. They will not provide a service for me. That's how the commercial multiple listing agent, they are more strict than even our MLS. Our MLS, yes. If you give it out and they found out, what's a fine? $5,000. $5,000. Whether you like it or not. Just like if you're using someone else's photos, how much? $1,500 per photo. So do not use anybody loaded on the MLS photo. Don't get lazy. Take your own photos. Okay? $1,500 per photo. But you use the photo for Yeah. Because you do not have a right to use a photo. Someone took the photos. You don't have a right to use someone else's photo. Even you relist it. You are the expired list. You took the expired listing, and you're using their photos. Okay, on the previous listing photo, you're in big trouble. You just ask, for, and they don't give you the warning. They just give you the citation from MLS. You don't want to pay? Fine. They don't want to use the MLS anymore. You're out. Okay. How is that the buyer agent? Give all we need to use that photo, we need to ask the permit or the permit. Mm -hmm. If the distance is a yes, and they can do it, then you can do it. Then you give a big, you need to give them what form? The zip form we have, photograph, uh, photo, uh, photo, is it called a, a photograph authorization attempt or something like that. I got to have to show you later. We do have a form. You need to let the listing agent sign it. Or if you hire, if you hire the photographer, you gotta let the photographer sign it. Because you hire the photographer, you using this time doesn't mean you can use next time. Okay? You gotta make the, make sure that them sign it. So you pay them whatever, maybe whatever the dollars, and you wanna use their photos again, you gotta maybe need to pay it again. Otherwise, they can after you, they can sue you. Or even on um, your say, for example, your website. You want to use a background photo. Wow, this is a nice view. Be careful. Do they have a copyright? If they show you the exactly the same photos, you're in trouble too. You have to pay. Yeah. Same thing. Oh no no! If it okay, if the house for lease, if you're the same, you are. I, I took my own photos, okay. I I helped. I listed, and if later I want to lease it, they cannot sell it for expire. Okay, I, I I my own photo. Yes, I can definitely use it, but if not your own. Then don't use it. Don't use it. Okay, just that's why. Even you take your. Your, your smartphone to take some photos, that's okay. But just don't use someone else's photo. If it doesn't take by you, don't use it. Because this is a big issue starting, actually starting this year. Okay. And even, you know, our broker, Quan, he would love to fight for you, $750. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm worth cheaper. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll sue the other broker for $750 per photo. Not only you need to pay MLS, you may get another lawsuit from the other broker or agent. For what? Just take your own photos. Doesn't matter your photo doesn't look good, but it's, at least it's your own, okay? If you use someone else's photo, and another thing is that don't copy any description from the other listing agent either, okay? That also has a copyright. 
See, one photo, right? <laughs> one photo, that's thing. And then let's give you $1,500 right away. That's it. All I need to do, hey, wait, that's my photo. I call MLS. I don't have to go out, okay? And, no, no, they will never, they won't give you any, they won't give you any warning. They just give you citation right away. So don't get lazy, please. That's a big issue, okay? Don't get lazy. You take your own photos. Even you don't have the, uh, a nice camera, that's okay. At least you take a one or a couple, you know, use your smartphone. Uh, now, actually, the smartphone can take great photos. Yeah, if you know how to do it, you know, sometimes I want going out. I don't want to bring the, uh, those a big camera, but I, hey, yeah, the, my iPhone can do a great photos. Yeah. <clears throat> if you know how to shoot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One more question. Mm -hmm. If we, 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 uh, we go to the open house for some time, mm -hmm. can we go to the inside to the photo that belongs to us? Not exactly. Why I'm saying that. But it's not the same. I know. It's not the same. Yeah. Before, that's another rule. <laughs> Later on, if I show you that form, you know, I, I studied the new form that the photographer, that, that form, we never use it, but it was there. But I never studied until I studied and say, wait a minute. If I go, um, for example, it doesn't matter, open house, or I just showing the property. When I show the property, technically, technically, can uh i take the photo as an agent i cannot for buyer i cannot control but legally buyer cannot take the photo without a seller's permission so not just an open house you're just showing the property you know some of a property you know some people say, can i take your photos you know for my husband well um you do whatever you want i i i did not hear that <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me because if you ask me I will tell you no because I don't have a permission from the listing agent or the, and the listing agent doesn't have an authorization authority to allow you to do that legally listing agent need to ask a seller I know it's a lot of hassle used to be they don't have that issue now because so many lazy people <laughs> now we have an issue no. I, I, can I do it? No. Because Legally, no. Because I have one, one issue. He, he said he wanted to do in the video and show his wife. No. So I say no. In the future, we should be saying no. Right? I say, I did not hear that. <laughs> okay. Because I'm the agent. I, I, I'm afraid somebody is a mystery shopper, you know, from, from the board, then I'm in trouble. Legally? You cannot, because I, oh, oh, you want to take the photo? I didn't hear that. If you really want to take it, I need to ask a permission. How long is it going to be take? I don't know. You just have to wait here. But if you taking a photo or video without I'm hearing anything, it's your own responsibility. If, 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 hey, if you got an issue, I have to do, I, I didn't know they take the photos or I have no control. Especially vacant property. Yeah. Yeah. So that's some of the issue, you know. Yeah, may happen lately. Okay. Clear? Okay. So photog uh, for the photos, be careful. <laughs> Rule of thumb, using your own photos. Go out and take it. If you guys doesn't know how to take the great photos, you know, maybe using a smartphone, I can probably teach you how to do it. <laughs> but that's outside of the training here. <laughs> I learn, you know, I do learn, take the photos, you know, a great photo through my smartphone. So when I'm going out, when I see anything, whoo, grab it and I take it. I think the best photo what I got is you know uh, using the iPhone and the best photo I got is a, a iPhone. I mean their original photo because any apps they will blur or make you look prettier. I don't want prettier. I want as a reality, especially 
I found out the, uh, uh, the video, it's a high definition video. It's so clear. Even iPhone, I can shoot at 4K. Higher, I, I keep it at 1080 HD, but I can change to 4K if I really, really want a nice video. Just get into the setting, you can change it. Yes, now you feature on the iPhone, that's part of it, yes. That, that's, you know, I pretty much it flipped the whole iPhone inside out. <laughs> you know, I, just like, you know, lately I try to find out how can I get the eSIM? You guys hear that? eSIM, SIM card, E, E, eSIM. So no more SIM card. Uh -huh. After they download the new iOS, you can have the eSIM. So I try to figure it out. I may have to go down, nice, go through at and I may have to go out on the superstore and see how can I miss make it on eSIM that I stick it out. So I can took out my, my uh, SIM card slot. So when I go out of country, so I can keep the ringing, you know, um, I'm a local here and I can have, if I go to Taiwan, I stick it on the, the Taiwan uh, SIM card and on the same phone, instead of used to be, you know, I have to carry two phones and I share the hotspot because I enabled for the AT&T Wi-Fi. So when somebody call me, my phone can still ring because as long as I get internet, that's a Wi-Fi enable. So see if you guys turn on that feature. So when I go like, you know, my friend's house in Chino Hills, the signal is like so bad. When we go in their house, hey, my phone's working, no problem. Because I'm using their internet to pick up the phone. That's called enable Wi-Fi. So technically my client doesn't know where am I. I could be in the Russia, I could be in China, Taiwan, Korea. Hey, you don't know where am I? I still pick up my phone. And it's clear. I use that, you know, in so many years. Yeah. You saw, you know, I'm I'm a techie guy. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, featured option our seller is uh oh okay. Seller instruct the broker to advise the MLS that seller does not want visitor to MLS participant or subscriber website and electronic display that display the property listing and have the feature below. Seller understand that the option now apply only to the website electronic display the MLS participant and subscription who are real estate broker and agent member of the MLS. Two, the other internet site may or may not have the feature set forth here. In. And three, the neither broker nor the MLS may have the ability to control the block such feature on other internet site. So if you are using um, the uh, full feature, uh, our multiple listing service, outside of uh, uh, our, you know, for the private sector, they can actually uh, see all the feature and so do the uh, photos. But you can option now say, sometimes we leave the uh, address but without the photos or we can only option out maybe some other feature. When I go through the multiple listing service, how you use the MLS on the listing, and I will show you, you know, on the agents feature on that, on the tab, you, we can option out, okay? But when you option out the feature, you better prepare the form of S-E-L-I, okay? You see that bottom? We, we, we uh, come, you know, right here <clears throat> on the B, B part, the SEO I form. Those are, you, you know, if anything you want to option out from internet, okay, you let the seller sign this form so we don't get in trouble. Because seller can say, how come, you know, they cannot see on my, all of my photos and the features? Oh, I thought you tell me to block it. Am I? When? Uh-huh. <laughs> You let them sign it already. So when you took the listing, if they don't want it, let them sign it. Just like when you modify the price, if you reduce, adjust the price, you better let them sign modification of term. Because if you don't let them sign, they may not admit it when they tell you to reduce the price or adjust the price or any other term and condition or anything excluded or in, in, inclusion. So that is part of a modification of term because once you sign a listing agreement, done, set. You don't want to add anything and change anything. Right after seller sign it, this form is done. You cannot change anything after that. Anything need to change, 
modify the listing, original listing agreement, you need to get, sign the modification of terms. That's a form you use, the proper form to use. Okay, then you let sell the sign because the date differently. Data differently. Uh, a uh, comment of the review: the ability to write comments and review about the property on this site, or the ability to link to another site, contain such comment or review if the link is immediate conjunction with the property display. Some seller doesn't like to see the bad review. Okay, and. You can probably option out if you don't want to put on the internet. Okay, some people really do concern. Or you know, did you see? You know, when we're using Yelp, and if you got bad review, or using Zillow, some of the agent may have a bad review. I mean, how do I block that? Ah, I can't. <laughs> okay, so those are um, the issue, you know, some, some seller doesn't like that. You know, after people are, uh, look at their property, you ask the, the, a re, uh, the review on it. Sometimes they don't like the bad review, you know, showing on a property. Because the private sector, they will allow for the review. B, automatic estimate the value. Some seller doesn't like that either. Okay. The ability to create an automatic eliminated value, the link, another site contains such as estimated value if the link is immediate conjunction with the property display. And that seller elect to option out the certain internet feature as provided by CAR form, SEOI, or local equivalent form. So if you don't want to be your property on all the feature, estimated value, like Zestimate, um, any, you know, on the private sector internet, why don't you just, you know, remove it, everything from the internet. So just keep the listing, everything on the multiple listing service, MLS only, not on any private sector. So realtor.com, Redfin, they cannot even see it. We can remove that option out uh, on the, uh, when we upload it on multiple listing service as a listing agent, we can option that out. I will go over that when I, you know, go through the MLS feature all the long. Well, certainly it gotta be a little while because I need to finish all the this, the form <laughs> before I go through the MLS. Okay, that's tour to the end of a session. Not bad. Seller representation. Seller represent that unless otherwise specified in writing. Seller is unaware of one any notice of a default recording against the property. Two. Any delinquent amount due under any loan secured by or other obligation affecting the property. Three, any bankruptcy, insolvency, and similar proceed affecting the property. Four, any litigation, arbitration, administrative action, government investigation, and other pending and threatened action that affecting or may affect the property. Seller ability to transfer it. Five, any current pending uh, proposed special assessment affecting the property. Seller shall promptly notify broker in writing if the seller become aware of any of this item during the listing period or any extension thereof. When we took the listing, I would always encourage you to look at the real list. Why? Because I know a lot of a listing agent, when they took the listing, they do not look at the real list. They just based on what the seller telling them. So sometimes you even spill the name wrong from the title because you did not see it, okay? Or uh, if they have an issue on the mortgage issue, it could be a notice of default, bankruptcy, uh, divorce, you better know ahead of time. Because you know you got to have to know uh, what uh, issue you have to deal with. Because that's you got to have to ask a lot of uh, private <laughs> question, you know, from the seller. Even they are kind of, yeah, you know, we're late on the payment. Well, how many months? <laughs> Because you're ready to get maybe receive notice default if you close to three months. 
Because when you show the notice default on the title, it may affect your selling price. People are saying, you better be in a hurry. Otherwise, you'll get foreclosed. So that's the, the, the way they can get discount price. Isn't it? Yeah. So you better, that's why you tell the uh, uh, seller, say, look, you better disclose everything to me so I can fully help you. Just like, if you're fighting a case, you don't tell your attorney truth. <laughs> you try to hide something. But when you really actually, on the court, and the other attorney found out your, 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 your own stuff, and your attorney did not prepare for you, uh-oh. You might lose a case. Whose fault is that? You. So you better ask the seller, disclose as much as you can right now when I took the listing. Any late payment? Any bankruptcy? Any delay? Okay? Or anything issue in the house? Even the repair? Or any claim on the insurance? Those are the questions you might have to be it has to ask the uh, seller. So you will take the note when, especially on the marketing, the, uh, the property, you know what to prepare, okay? Just like, you know, we prepare the seller's objection before we meet them. It could be, yeah. So you don't, sometimes how we overcome the objection, sometimes, you know, if you, um, try to overcome the seller's objection, you know, right after they just, you know, shoot it over to you. Then if you don't have ex enough experience, then you might just like, uh, stop there. So if you could, you rather, uh, say, for example, what are those three questions from, I tell you, you know, from Mike Ferry, especially second question. Um, are you planning to, you know, selling there? Or, and the, should we market the, the price for sale or sell on the market? Then you can extend it on that question and say, how much do you have in mind? Oh, okay. And some people, sometimes the seller will ask you over the phone, what's your commission? Or say, well, and I will probably ask them, what do you think is fair for me? 1%? They was sometimes sell one percent. Oh, I see. Okay, I'll I'll answer your you know question when I meet with you. I don't answer or you you may get upset. What are you talking about? One percent? Calm down. Okay, I have to even when I sign a listing in front of a seller and I ask the same question. Just a your seller asked me what your what's your uh, 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 commission. I haven't even took out my uh, listing agreement yet. What's my commission? Oh, you talk about a compensation fee, huh? Okay. Uh, what do you think is fair? That's my service fee. My service fee, not commission. Why? The compensate mean I deliver the work, you compensate me. Okay. Commission is more like I'm the middleman, so I make easy money. Sounds like that. It's just different words. <laughs> and it is though, seller shoot at me. She laughed, 1%, is that work? I say, wow, okay. Do you think that will work? <laughs> she, asked, she laughed. I say, then what do you, th then she asked me, I say, what do you think is fair? I say, 6%, okay. That's the time when I took it out of the listing agreement. <laughs> right away, signed it. <laughs> And what price? Yeah. Okay, broker and seller's duty. Broker agree to exercise a reasonable effect of a due diligence and achieve the purpose of this agreement, unless seller gives the broker written instruction to the contrary. A broker is authorized but not required to one order, report, and disclose, including those specified in 7C, as necessary. And advise that the market, that property by the method and in the uh, medium selected by the broker, including MLS and internet. 
and to the extent that permit by the media, this media control and dissemination of the information submitted to any media. Three, disclose to any real estate licensee making an in injury and receive of any offers on the property and offering price and such offers. So broker is actually, we authorize do so many things, but it's not required, but it's up to you. Not only that, sometimes, you know, we have to up to the seller. Okay, the seven C is could be from structural pest control, general property inspection, homeowner association document. Because those are who need to pay, seller. If, if you mark that, I mean, seller have to get, you know, pay those company, you come out to do the inspection, da, da, da. Well, certainly, unless you want to pay agent, <laughs> listing agent. Before you're spending the money, you already pay all the, do you think, you know, when we're listing the property is free? No, we pay board, we pay MLS. It's not free. Then we make the flyer, it's not free either. Okay, so a lot of items is not free. But when we, when our listing expire, well, it's free for a seller. We're just losing money when we listing, you know, our listing expire. Okay. <clears throat> and B, seller agreed to consider offering presented by the broker and to act in good faith of accomplish and sale of a property by. Among other things, making the property available for show at a reasonable time and subject to paragraph 3F. Referring to the broker or inquiring at any party interest in the property, seller is responsible for determining at what price to list and sell the property. So we got to have the agreement with the seller. That's why we got a listing agreement. What price should we put it on the market? Sometimes you use a strategy market low and end up going higher. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, whatever the price on the mark uh, on the listing agreement doesn't mean the seller we have to when with an actual offer come in and they need to accept it. You know, so like auction, they always market like fifty percent off. Do you think their listing agreement will market higher? No, they will put it whatever the price. But seller is not going to be agree until their designated uh, price in their in their own mind. So that means it's a seller's. Uh, choice, okay, so, well, how much they want to sell the property. C, investigation and report. Seller agreed within five days of the beginning of a data agreement to pay for the following. Pre-sale report, okay, that could be structural pest co control, that's a termite, and general property inspection, sometimes a seller would like to, you know, order the first and they need to pay. And homeowner association document, those are, you know, I would suggest, you know, the seller will pay is because, um, they will, you know, expertise. If it's you selling the property with the HOA. <coughs> because HOA sometimes will, t uh, if you order ahead of time, you can have a cheaper price. So you don't have to, you don't, you don't need to pay the expedition, you know, ex express fee. Expertise fee. Sometimes they answer, oh, you, how, how, uh, when do you want it? Two to three days? Hey, you got to pay extra. Just like we, you know, mailing the items or whatever the service. You want to expertise it? Pay. Yep. You need to pay extra fee. So that's how you explain to the seller. Uh, if you could, home association, why don't you just order? Not only that is because you need to order sooner or later anyway. And if the homeowner, they willing to order ahead before the uh, open escrow or before, you know, uh, right after the, uh, we took the listing, you know, they are serious want to sell the property because they are, they start spending money already. Especially if you took those listings, like in Orange County, they have three HOA. You better order ahead of time because the three HOA, it takes time to have all three HOA documents to be arrived at the same time because some some of HOA is paid by monthly some HOA pay by quarterly and also got annually three different HOA deposit broker is authorized to accept the uh, uh, the and hold on sellers behalf of any deposit to be applied toward uh, the purchase price yeah we could you know accept and hold a seller's on behalf on the seller, a buyer's deposit, but usually we don't do that anymore. 
we just you know tell the buyer you just send the check you know once they open escrow send the check or you know the, uh, directly to the escrow make it to escrow we don't really do it a third party check anymore used to be we just made it out to remax 2000 and we hold on to it uh as if it's a buyer okay then then we turn it in you know we have quant to endorse it as a remax 2000 and forward to whatever the escrow but we don't do that anymore so on the purchase agreement we just put in the uh, uh, wiring or maybe personal check put it directly to the escrow but can you accept that as a deposit? Yeah, you can still authorize to accept the deposit. Yeah. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll leave it on the paragraph nine until we come back at December 4th. So we got a, a two weeks off. Yeah. So have a nice Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Okay, I'll see you before Christmas. <laughs>